Okay, hey guys, we're gonna do a review on the B-Man Kodiak. Um, I just actually thought of it. I made the first part, or the second part of the video first, but um, first let's go over the specs. I'm actually going to use the H&M Barracuda because I do not have the actual tin, and they have a pretty good idea. There are 200 pellets per tin. This goes for the Barracuda and the B-Man Kodiak. <coughs> for you UK metric guys, they are 1.37 gram grams. Sorry, and for all of us that do pellet and bullet weights and grains, they are 21.14 grains. Um, H&N rates their Barracuda and Beeman pellets at a 4 out of 5 precision, which is pretty much accuracy. They are intended for hunting and small pest elimination. Um, they have a 5 out of 5 distance, which is how far they will go with retained energy. These are 22 calibers. This is a 22 caliber rifle. Um, the recommended energy is around 25 joules, which I think goes out to around 15 foot-pounds. So anyway, this is um, a hunting pellet, first off. Um, they do make a match version in the 177. I'm pretty sure they also make one in 22, but those are not real match pellets. Um, get another one. this. That's the how the tail of it right here. And this will be bear with me here because I cannot extremely well see. And then there you can see it. Uh, move that over. And off the bat you will see something definitely noticeably different about the being Kodiaks and H and Barracudas than say standard Round the nose pellets. One. These are a tapered dome pellets, which means they come to a slight point. These are not pointed pellets, first of all. These are first, first and foremost a dome pellet. This is a crossman from your dome. This is a round nose pellet. As you can see by the round nose. I'm actually going to shoot this off real quickly because you do not feel like opening the tin back up. Ugh. I'm on a really old uh, table that bounces up and down depending on how much weight you put on. I'm sorry I have to do this, but I do not like having pellets out. So I'm just going to shoot the little dirt pile. Alright. So back to the review. Dang it, stay. There. Oh, I fell down. No worries. So, um, yep, it, they're tapered dome, so they do come to slight points. Versus their traditional round nosed pellet. Which are just round. Couldn't figure that out. <laughs> um They do, in fact, um, probably have a higher ballistic coefficient than the traditional round nose because of the slight point. Again, that's called a taper dome. Um, sometimes I've, I've seen a once are called a pointed dome pellet. Um, I just think those people don't know what they're talking about, but I guess it's just a nickname. Um, these are not pointed whatsoever. In the second part of the video, you will actually see what these will do to a 2-liter Pepsi cap at 20 yards head-on. It's devastating. Warning. <laughs> um, what else can I say that I did not cover in the second one? Um, in my gun, they are the one of the two most accurate. It and the Asian and Barracudas are definitely my most accurate pellets. They are heavy, so they're definitely going to retain downrange energy. They go at slower velocity, so they're going to have more of an arc to it, like a 25 caliber pellet might. But, I hate when people just go straight up on velocities and shooting flat. If you cannot judge your distances, well, then definitely go ahead with the 177 and go hunt your birds. I do not recommend a 177 for any kind of fur game hunting. So here's a rabbit. <coughs> such as rabbit, squirrel, 
raccoon, especially, and groundhog. Because those are extremely large, well, the raccoon and the groundhog are extremely large. Um, they require a gigantic pellet. I'm going to wrap this video up short because I have family here, so see ya. Okay, hey guys, here's my third video for the day. I didn't think I'd make that many. But, um, I did shoot this Pepsi can with a 20, or a 22 caliber. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Um, Beam and Kodiak. Seems to be one more ac one of the most accurate pellets of my gun. I shot the cap head on. I found a piece of it. You can definitely tell these Kodiak pellets take pack one hell of a wallop. Well, here's another little piece. You can just see if you can see. There's a little chunk right there. Chunks over there. So. I'm going to pick them all up and see what's going on. Alright, actually I'm going to pick up the bottle too. Looks like no pellet exited, which baffles me. Well, I guess this is about as much as I could find of it. So, this is all, these little pieces are all side. Side pieces. This is the actually top of the cap, and it just pretty much blew off. When I saw it, it literally looked like it exploded. I'm not even exaggerating. I also wanted to take a look at this can down here. I took a shot at. Oh, oh shit! There's still stuff in there. There's actually a little piece of the cap over over there. If you can see that. Damn. Yep. Some Mountain Dew all over my feet. I'll have to go wash that off in a minute. I did take a shot. It was a pretty lucky shot with a beam and Kodiak. And from there, you can see right through. I do give the beam and Kodiak a thumbs up for a hunting pellet in my rifle. That penetration and the accuracy I'm getting, um, I could definitely take anything from a house sparrow to a raccoon efficiently and clean. Um, a raccoon, I would definitely not stray beyond 20 yards. Whatever, since that is about my max range for a one inch or so group. Oh, I will shut this off. I'm going to make another part to my uh, video for the these. Measuring them and just writing down the size of the groups. Sorry I have not done that yet. You know, I said I would. But um, anyway, this is just to show the extreme power of these pellets. They do not deform, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I'm actually going to explain. I guess this is going to be a tad bit of a 22 caliber beam and Kodiak review. Actually, you know what? I'll make a review in a minute. This is going to be afterward, so probably going to get confusing, but this is going to be the afterward of the review. But anyway, these pellets will definitely stay intact after they are shot. They, um... Practically identical to the H&M Barracuda, except dye, and uh, probably the same leather cutoff does. The only pellets that are pretty much the same, straight out of the box, are the Crossman Blue brand pellets. Like these right here, the Premier pellets. I don't know about their Discovery line, which is the exact same pellet. Um, I don't know if they, I think they actually kicked the price up, just called it a PCB or PCP only pellet or whatever. I don't know what Crossman's thinking. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, yeah, they pretty much stay intact. They'll tackle um, small um, small game like a house sparrow, grackle, starling, pretty much any avian game that is legal to hunt. Um, you can actually hunt a sparrow, starling, ground sparrow and a regular house sparrow and I think even grackles for pest control throughout the year and you don't need a hunting license you don't need a you don't need anything um, they're not protected by US law um, so these are all your shoot birds so if you're in an area where you know you can shoot your air rifle and um, it's at a safe distance or a distance you can make that shot and um, you're not going to hit anything for damage 
um, property damage, then um, I'd go ahead and take that shot if you can make it. Because, um, like I said, no, nothing is needed. You can shoot them all year long. But anyway, back to the pellet. So, these would pretty much go right through small, light game like uh, the birds. Um, game like squirrel and rabbit, I'm sure they will um, probably exit also since they are 21.14 grain pellets. So let me show you the cap of the Kodiak, or the Barracuda. They are a, yes, right here, 21.14 grain pellets. These are the regular Barracuda, not the Barracuda match. These are for hunting and pest control. Um, they get a 4 out of 5 precision and a 5 out of 5 distance. Um, I'll actually do a separate review for the H&N Barracuda. I just don't have the H&N, um, um, or the Beeman Kodiak pellets. And the original thing with me at the moment. So anyway, um, yeah, with um, those lighter game, it'd probably go through due to the heavier weight. Um, it will also retain, most likely retain a lot of energy at 50 yards versus one of those crossbow pellets like the domes, which actually have a high ballistic coefficient, I guess, for their weight, someone said. And um, on heavier game, like uh, jackrabbit, possum, and raccoon, um, Jackrabbit, I'm sure it'll probably still go through. You only need a, about 8 foot pounds, from, according to Dr. Beeman. For me, that's about 12 foot pounds. Um, I basically add on 3 to 4 foot pounds of what Dr. Beeman says to be on the safe side. So, for a raccoon, this would probably stay in the raccoon if you took a headshot. Because these do not do extremely well extreme, against um, probably something as strong as bone. But um, they would definitely make that a bad rack, uh, that bad day for that raccoon. She at about 17 or 18 foot pounds. So anyway, um, that's pretty much for this part of the review. So um, see it when I do another pillow.